people, my name is Patrick Loisel. I'm the lead singer and guitarist of the Montreal band Augury. Uh, Augury has a primary meaning that everybody knows, which is predicting the future from signs in nature, like uh, the birds in the sky fly left, oh, it's gonna rain tonight. But uh, there's a further meaning, which is the one that, that, that it's a main meaning to us, it's the one that we used. It's uh, simply, it comes from a book about the Salem Witch Trial, which, uh, in which uh, simply, uh, you know that there were people accused to, be, to practice witchcraft. And in the law text from the, that era, witchcraft, it was called the felony of augury. So that was a synonym of, for witchcraft. Problem is, is that any people with bizarre knowledge, let's say that you're a villager from somewhere, and you have knowledge about physics or botanics and science, so people, ignorant people, might accuse you of being a witch, and so you are an augury. So in our case, augury has become a synonymous with forbidden knowledge. And hence our writing about, uh, let's see that uh, runes on the water, on the water building, that the official history tries to cover up the shadow government, the real history of mankind, uh, conspiracy theories, uh, uh, the nature of the soul, whatever it can, it can, it can go, I can use it for any topic. <laughs> A tarantula breeder. Yeah, but I, I did have snakes before, but uh, I'm mostly in tarantulas. Uh, I'm switching spiders, spiders. Spider, yeah, giant spiders. I have some of them that are in the 10 inch leg span, and I feed them lizards, mice, birds, and stuff once a month. It's funny because that's the type of animal that I can leave and go for weeks and they, they won't die and they won't miss me. And they can live like 40 years old, and uh, some of them are extremely colorful and agile. Like, it's like having a Jackie Chan show in a cage. Uh, when they when they hunt so uh, and uh, i'm into uh, breeding uh, endangered species and sell them to people instead of over collecting in the wild because uh, it might sound underground but in some countries there are such popular pets that some areas are raised and they're all brought into the hobby and uh, it's an ecological catastrophe anyway off subject <laughs> So uh, keep supporting your metal scene. There are great metal bands all over Canada. Yeah, yeah, we had Strapping the Young Lads in Vancouver in this era. You had the Unleash the Archers, uh, Three Inches of Blood, uh, Divinity out of Calgary, Into Eternity. Uh, in Quebec, we are proud of Gorgot's Martyr and so, unexpected so many bands. So thank you for supporting all of us. And then uh, see you later on the road. Hi, my name is Patrick Loisel from the band Augury, and you're watching Absolute Underground TV. Crank it up. Just limo boys, all their money spent, but they are standing tall, they're gonna see it all, they don't pay any rent. Straight to the curves, getting out of the sticks. They're driving down the highway to the Vancouver Olympics Making their way You gotta check out the show Yeah, they're doing alright living in a, a limo Yeah! You're watching Absolute Underground Television, and it sucks because I'm not on it. Wait, I am. Wait, it's over. You're watching. Goodbye. Hey, this is Matty V with AUTV, and I'm here with Jason Rouse outside Hecklers. Mm. 
that was an <laughs> awesome show tonight, wasn't it? It was, it was. There was some conflict and some hatred and some anger. It was fucking pretty fucking cool. And uh, I'll definitely come back. It's, uh, yeah. it's good, yeah, yeah. You're on an international tour right now. You want to yeah, tell yeah. us about that? I'm doing uh, 14 countries in seven months, and uh, this is country number four, and uh, it's very cool. I'm very, yeah. Oh, wow, wow. Am I living my dream in Victoria? The retirement community that I love. Because I love older women. I like a girl that's so old that her arthritis is so bad her legs stay up by themselves. It's like fucking rusty patio furniture. <laughs> Lucky it landed on your diaper. But uh, it's good to be here. The first time I played Victoria. How are you doing tonight? I'm good, thank you. I know you're semi-sober, which yeah. I find rude. I, I'm very sorry. And we got fucking uh, Peter Parkinson's working the fucking shaky cam over here. Lucky you got steady shot on this. He's got epilepsy real bad. In Vancouver. But I know it's Hollywood North, but when are they going to finish that horror movie they're shooting on Hastings Street? <laughs> Holy fucking Dawn of the Dead zombie motherfuckers. Have you seen that? Change! Change! And you know when you feed the homies, you got to keep your hand flat or they'll suck your cock. <laughs> and thank you, DeVry. Damn. I heard a little rumor that you might be opening uh, and introducing a, uh, the AVN Awards. Yeah, yeah. Was, I just talked to um, my uh, potential manager, who's uh, part of that, uh, the uh, Adult Film Awards. And... Um, hmm. I might be hosting that, I think, late August, which would be cool, because everybody likes the fuck. Yeah. Pornography's uh, great and good for all of us. Cameraman's got his hand on his nuts right now, by the way, if you're kind of wondering how the hell you hit all of that. These bitches are going, did someone debris murder to bring pepper spray? <laughs> it doesn't work on me, I'm used to it. And I stay hard and I finish. Mm -hmm. I actually fucked this guy to get to you. <laughs> Who's the faggot now? <laughs> Don't worry, Hasselhoff. I'll put a wig on your ass so it looks like you're blowing me. <laughs> no kissing! Having a Canadian passport and, and touring, especially the way the world is at this state, Canada is fucking worth its weight in gold. A lot of respect all over the world. You know, every country I've been to, and, and um, they're always pleased that you're Canadian. We have a lot. We got a lot of love in the rest of the world, even though we share a border with fucking psychopaths. But it's cool. What is this secretary's night out over here? What are you old broads doing in here? Looking for some cock to split the old glory hole? She's got her hand over her pussy like I'm gonna steal it or something. Look at me, I'm Davy Crockett. Hey, I'm Jason Rouse, and you are watching Absolute Underground. So uh, this is Absolute Underground TV, and we're here with Peter and Paul from the Polish heavy metal band, Vader. Okay, well, let's talk a little bit about like some of your religious iconography that you use, you know, in your, um, in your lyrics and in your music videos and stuff. Um, like, for instance, Never Say My Name, I was checking that one out. 
And it seemed like it was at least set in sort of a biblical time. You know, your name's Peter and your name's Paul, right? And Poland is like a, a historically like a Catholic country, right? There's a lot of Catholics living in, in Poland. So, you know, when you made the video, how much input did you have into like what it was all about? And, and, and why, why was it set in a biblical time? You know, video and song was like two different things. Uh, actually, uh, when I was writing the song for, because I, I was really lyrics for that one, that never said my name. I was thinking about like uh, the fan people today, you know, about the, how they uh, they cannot keep anything for themselves. They like to show everything outside, you know. They, the nervous system is outside. Stress, you know, outside, and they, all this YouTube, like MySpace things, like you talk about your life, you, you don't have any privacy. And this was kind of this, you know, you, you read about that between the lines, of course, because it's all about Vader and song. So if we're talking about some emotions and our personal feelings, uh, me as a writer, I put all the feelings, emotions in between the lines. So we use this special metal language, like we're talking some like stories, which might be totally different for a listener. But if you can like deep, get deeper into like try to understand something, try to read between the lines, you can catch that. Actually, we never told like straight about what we wrote about, what we think about, been been writing the lyrics. And, uh, but the religious things, right? Religion, like you know, religion is kind of provocation, and uh, we touch this theme because we want to provoke people. Religion, especially in Poland, is kind of like poison for masses, you know. And um, uh, this this is tradition, and some people cannot like understand, cannot uh, divide it tradition from belief. I get nothing about people who believe and what they believe in, but I totally cannot understand and will never understand those who use the belief of people. Like uh, church, you know, like all these systems, religious systems. And that's why we try to talk about it and that we, we just don't like it. But one more time, we're not like against the people that they believe, we're against those who use the belief of people. That's what, that's what we're talking about. Rise of the undead, enjoy. This is heavy metal, so we, we we're talking about this like spooky stories, like ghosts, like supernatural things. But uh, maybe that's why for some people who are like never never liked metal, never even tried to understand the meaning of this music, so they they don't understand it. For for many people, the metal is just stupid music, like about nothing, some stories like fairy tales or something. But all the thing is just we put emotions like in between the lines. All the emotions is put into stories. It's like, so you have to use your imagination. And uh, if you have anything like that to understand it, you can take it totally different. But this is how it is. That's, that's the beautiful part of that. You can like interpret it in your own way. Sometimes it's dangerous because for, if you're teenage, sometimes you can take it straight. If you call about the cult of Satan, you can take it straight and serious. But we're not just talking about like killing people, things like that. We're talking about like more serious things, especially now being like experienced by life very low. And uh, but we still use the same language. Metal story. If somebody said you different, it's not metal. I cannot imagine Vader been sitting home just recording albums and getting money. This is not metal. Metal is playing live. If you cannot play what you recorded, you're not metal. Metal is stage. Metal is, you know, this chaos. Metal is being together with fans. And maybe that's why, like, uh, we see uh, generations coming up to see us. So we see like two teenagers, like 12 years old kids in like in front row, 
but we still have like veterans, old guys, old friends being like 40, 50 years old. So this is a good thing and this is what make us proud because we talking not for one particular like generation or like people with like one age or something. So we're talking to everybody. DOA started in 1978, and uh, we were recording, uh, planning on recording our second album, uh, talking about this, working on songs towards the end of 1980, and um, <clears throat> our manager said, well, we, we'd heard about this expression that the, this a guy had written this magazine article in a mag magazine in San Francisco, so there's a new type of punk rock, a new type of music, and I call it hardcore, because it's non-compromising, straight ahead, and it doesn't sound like New York, and it doesn't sound like London. It's very West Coast, and then it cited examples like DOA, Black Flag, the Dead Kennedys, uh, the Dills, so on, so on. So it's a great bands of the West Coast of that era. The DOA, as a Canadian band, how did you pursue and tour so much and really get out there? Well, I think that the, the whole touring ethic, first off, I got my work ethic from my father, who's like definitely your... Uh, uh, hard-working guy who wouldn't stop and providing for his family type thing so and uh, uh, I didn't want to be instilled with that work ethic but somehow he drove it into me even though I was resisting every step of the way right I just happened to translate it into music which he kind of thought was garbage and a waste of time later on he changed his mind right but um, the thing with the uh, a lot of bands would go and play in their area or the Dead Candies because they were quite they were definitely like the biggest American band of that era right you know, not quite as big as the Pistols or the Clash, but the next echelon, right, you know, for popularity. They would go fly somewhere and play for 10 days, then fly home. But uh, it was bands like Black Flag and DOA. So we became buddies with them, like about, started doing shows with them in 1980, like all up between Vancouver and California. And we started just exchanging numbers. So usually if you go to a town somewhere in the Midwest or Central Canada or anywhere down South, uh, you would go, the opening bands, because um, a lot of times when we went to these towns, it was like punk rock pioneering, there would be no opening band because there was no punk rock band in that town. So then it was usually a race to see who would get there first, Black Flag or DOA. So then the next time you'd go, you could tell who had been there first because all the opening bands in some towns would kind of sound like DOA or the bands would kind of sound like Black Flag a little bit, you know, as being like, well, because that would be their first punk rock experience, right? So so we just like traded addresses and uh, phone numbers with those guys and contacts and we go, don't go there, that guy's a rip off or, oh yeah, that guy would give you 50 bucks or whatever the deal was. Over the years, it's sort of come to be that you've melded sort of activism and punk rock. Yeah. And uh, when did you decide to say, fuck the man, I'm going to be an activist, I'm going to speak out against this bullshit? Um, really, when I was about 16. Uh, I, I didn't realize it for until maybe 10 years ago that uh, I kind of got politicized by uh, my brother and I. Uh, my brother was a union organizer for the CAW for a long time. He's retired now, a um, bit older than me. And uh, But we just realized about five, six years ago, as our older sister, my older sister is like 65, right? And... Uh, she used to play all these folk records, like the Weavers and Pete Seeger and uh, Woody Guthrie and Bob Dylan that had all this, and all these political things. And this was like growing up in the, for me, like in the late 60s, early 70s. Yeah, let's talk about the Olympics for a second. I know because you're, you know, born and bred Vancouver. You yeah. And uh, what does this mean to you? Is it fucked you over? Is it 
Has it helped you? Well, they, they, uh, no, the Olympics hasn't personally fucked me over. Uh, I, I think it will fuck everybody over in Vancouver specifically, uh, BC generally, and Canada a bit too with uh, the bill that's left over. So the thing is, is like one thing, okay, on the practical side, there's the debt, which sucks, right? So it's not what they promised. The security bill is 10 times what they figured in this age. You know, I, I mean, maybe they didn't uh, count on this when they're thinking about bidding, but this whole bidding for it started after 9-11. So you could have counted that security bill would be like fucking massive, right? You know, and I think uh, that it's, you know, it's, it's really tough on uh, anybody who is kind of down and out. Right, you know, they'll be shoved aside, and the tourists will to try and put a really pretty face on Vancouver. And Vancouver is a wonderful town, but it's got a really, really ugly side to it too, as uh, you know, most people in the world know, with the downtown east side and the poverty and the drug addiction. Right, was it's a real fucking mess. Which, you know, no success of government are going back through the NDP or Liberals have really done fuck all about. Right, you know, so and and it's not being addressed now either. So this is why. I'm at the Olympics. Yeah. Hey, everybody, it's Joe Shithead from DOA. You know what? You're watching Absolute Underground TV.